Hello and welcome to the seventh video in this series, making simple Flappy Robin for Android using Cocos 2 dx version 3. So this video then we are going to make the Robin jump up and down on the screen when we touch the screen. We're going to make the Robin um, die effectively when he hits the floor and reset to the middle of the screen. So starting to get a bit of a look at our gameplay. The first thing we need then is we need to define something in, I'm in constants.h here. I want the robin state moving defined and also define the robin state stopped so we have some constants for when the robin is moving and not because we only want to update the robin's position obviously when the robin is in a moving state rather than a stopped state the other thing we want to define now is the robin's speed uh, the start speed so we call it k robin start speed y and Remember I said a couple of videos ago, everything in the Y direction is critical for the gameplay to maintain the same difficulty of gameplay irrespective of what ratio, uh, uh, sorry, pixel density we're using, uh, resolution, and all that depends on the Y. So we're going to say the start speed is 300, assuming of course a height of 640. So we need to then multiply that by our get scale Y macro and then by our get scale factor macro so that we account for high ultra high definition or low definition and here obviously the relevant scaling of the Y that should be as long as you understood that video about the multiple resolutions fairly understandable so that we always have exactly the same speed that the Robin starts jumping up with now the Robin needs to fall down obviously which means we need a gravity effectively and I found for now that a gravity of around minus 620 uh, makes for a reasonable sort of jumping action um, and what we can do, obviously, because we're doing it in constants this way, we can change this later on rather easily anyway, just by changing these constants quickly to make the gameplay as we want. So we have our gravity and everything in there, and now I want to move into the Robin sprite and now start actually updating or, or actually putting these functions, fleshing these functions out. So the first one's this set params here. I'm just going to scroll the screen down a bit. And in set params then, we want our top of screen to be equal to the top of the screen that was sent in. The set the start speed is our speed y will now be equal to k robin um, the start speed I've included already at the top of this file or to be honest I was preparing for this video and I forgot to remove the uh, the code but you'll need to include the game manager and constants.h at the top of um, robin here to be able to use the constants so we want k robin uh, start speed y so that then is the, the, the resetting then of the robin's start speed the next thing we want to do is to be able to reset the robin. Now when we reset the robin, what we first of all want to do is we want to make the state equal to k robin state stopped. So that's when the robin dies, he gets reset. We want to set its start speed because its start speed is now being reset to k robin start speed y. And we also want to set the position just as we did inside Hello World Scene. So inside Hello World Scene, I'm going to take this size, visible size, and just copy and paste this into Robin here, like so. And I don't have a red thing here because I haven't included the using namespace, like so. That should now be OK. And now what we can do then is just go back into the original code and this line to set the position of the robin we can just copy and paste into the reset here like so. So that now sets that and we'll actually call the reset then on the robin. This needs to be changed to this obviously without capitals please. And we'll replace this uh, code that's inside the hello world scene with this reset now anyway shortly in a minute when I've finished with these. So basically when the robin's reset, its state is set to stopped and set start speed then sets its speed to the start speed y. The reason we have this as a separate function in this way is because in the update loop when we tap the screen we want to set the start speed but the robin might not need resetting because it hasn't, hasn't died so we need to be able to call this function to do that. So the only interesting thing remaining really is the trickiest part and that's the update function. So the first thing we want to say is we want to say if state is equal to k robin state moving then we're going to do something and change its position otherwise we'll just ignore it because um, we don't want to do anything the game's uh, not running or the robin's not moving at the very least anyway 
And the way we're going to do this, we're going to use something called the SUVAT equations, S-U-V-A-T. If you put those into Google, SUVAT equations, S-U-V-A-T, you'll get a wiki page up. And you might remember from school in maths, it's this um, S equals uh, UT plus a half times T times, uh, sorry, a half times A times T times T, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. That basically says the distance moved is the initial velocity, which is our speed Y, multiplied by the time, which is our day for the time, plus a half times the acceleration, which is our gravity, times the time, times the time. And that gets us the distance, with positive being up and negative being down, that the robin has moved since the last update. What we'll then need to do is then get its new speed. And the speed is um, V equals U plus a multiplied by t. So that's the speed equals the previous speed y plus the acceleration, our gravity, multiplied by the delta time. So bearing this in mind, um, you'll find, surprisingly enough, that these equations actually work quite well for a realistic motion. So uh, they were all correct in school. So what first of all says we'll break this down into variables. So we have our distance, and then we'll say we have our new speed, and this is going to be virtually exactly the same code as I did in the Cocos 2DX version 2 series, so if you've already seen that then you'll already have this code, you might as well paste it in, because it's not really specific to Cocos 2D um, version th X version 3. So we have our speed Y then, so that's our U uh, multiplied by our T, which is our delta time, plus 0.5 multiplied by our gravity, multiplied by delta time multiplied by delta time, gives us then the distance that the robin has travelled. Remember this distance then is in the y direction. All distance is y and plus will be um, up the screen and negative down the screen. And then its new speed then is equal to its current speed, so its initial speed, u plus gravity multiplied by delta time. The next thing we need to do is set the new position of the robin. So we can say set position y. And that new position is this. Get position y plus the distance travelled. And now we can set the new speed y as well. So the new speed is equal to the new speed. And now what we want to say is that if and this and get position y is greater than um, top of the screen, that means that we've hit the top of the screen and we don't want the robin to go off the top of the screen because the tubes obviously aren't going to be infinitely tall and you can cheat very massively on the game if you can just fly over the tubes. So what we'll do is, is we'll set the position Y then to actually the top of the screen like so. And what we'll also do is we'll set the speed y equal to zero. And that has the effect then of the robin actually starts to fall straight away. Otherwise, if we left it its current speed, if that speed was already going upwards, it would appear to stick to the top of the screen for a little while before falling. And that's not so realistic. So we'll put the speed y equal to zero. I'll put a zero point zero there so we know it's a float as well. Like so. So that's then our update done to update the position of the robin of its new y and also then update its new speed as well. And combined with the gravity which is quite a high negative that has, a, you'll see in a minute, a real, relatively realistic, a realistic sorry, effect of it jumping up and then falling down. So now into helloworldscene.h we need a little bit of stuff in already for the game logic. So we're going to add a game over in and we're going to add something that really is a hack, but never mind. We're going to call it uh, floor bottom, like so. And into the initialization then, just before the scheduler here then, I'm going to say that game over is equal to true. The game is in a game over state at the moment. Nothing's happening or being updated. One thing we can do as well is the robin then, what we'll do is, is we'll do robin and set params and that can be the visible size dot height divided by, uh, oh no, sorry, just the visible size dot height. That'll be for the robin. And instead of this set position now, we'll just take this out and we can just call reset on the robin. Just to clean things up a little bit. So we can just say robin reset, like so. 
So it knows now where the top of the screen is and the robin's been reset which should position it uh, correctly. And now I want to set that floor bottom as well. So that's as low, uh, that, that's the point at which the robin essentially hits the floor. And I want this to be the middle of the floor. So we'll say the floor bottom equals the floor sprite. And then get bounding box and it's dot size dot height divided by two, so halfway up the floor, then will be the lowest that the uh, the robin can go. So that initializes then uh, these various things and should position the robin in the middle of the screen, all being well. And the last bit to do then is deal with the actual logic inside these functions here. And these functions, I'll sort of be updating them over time. That won't be perfect at the start. We'll deal with the overall game logic when we've got tubes and things later on. But what we can say is, is inside the game update loop, if the game over equals false, so a game is actually running, otherwise we don't want to update sprites or positions or anything. Then what we'll say is we'll say that if the robin and get oops get position uh, get position y is less than the floor bottom, so it's gone more than halfway down the floor, then it's crashed eventually uh, effectively and died. So we'll say that the game over equals true now. And what we'll also do then is call reset on our Robin, which then resets its state. Um, if I just go back into Robin here, then that will set it to a stop state so it's no longer moving and reset its position to the middle of the screen. So that's the first thing um, we'll do there. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to call the update on the Robin, which will change its position with the delta time, like so. OK, so that deals with that logic. That's fairly easy inside there. If the game's running, then see if the robin's died. Make the game over so we don't call this uh, section again. Otherwise, update the robin's position. And the last bit then is to deal with the touch here. And I'm going to comment out actually this um, touch here now so that it doesn't appear always in the console. And now what we want to say then is we want to say here that if the game over is true, and we've tapped the screen, it means we want to start a new game. So the first thing we do is take the robin and its state and set that equal to k robin state moving. Now I know I should have a getter and setter here, but I explained in a previous video, I um, shortened the code a bit and was a bit lazy. And now obviously we started the game, so we'll say the game over is now equal to false. And that will have the effect then of the robin being moving. So now when we call robin update, then we'll do the stuff inside the loop because its state is moving. And we'll also have the effect with the game over being set to false that we'll now run the stuff inside the loop here. Otherwise, if we tap the screen and game over was false, it means we're actually running. It means the robin's in the air and falling or maybe moving upwards still. But what we want to do, because we've tapped the screen, we want to set the start speed again of the robin so it gets this boost and originally sets off um, for, an, for, for a beginning tap. So its speed gets... Um, set back to the 320 or whatever it was and obviously that speed then with every update review reduces with the effect of gravity and this has the effect of giving it 300 upwards again. So that should be, he says very hopefully, uh, all we need um, to actually have the effect of the robin jumping up and down on the screen. So I'm just going to run the application here trying to think whether I've missed anything or not. So let's tap the screen and now you can actually see that the robin is jumping nicely on the screen, it doesn't go off the top of the screen, sticks to the top of the screen, it doesn't stick, sorry, to the top of the screen either, falls straight away, and if I let him fall, he resets the middle of the screen when he hits the middle of the floor. Now obviously, when it resets, if I carry on clicking, it looks like nothing's actually really, really happened, um, but that's because we're not putting any kind of enforced delay in there um, before the robin resets or anything like that. But we'll do that later on in the game logic when we've got the clouds and trees on and the tubes on and stuff like that. That's sort of a fine point we can do towards the end of the application. But for now then, that's uh, it for this video. We've got the robin jumping fairly, fairly realistically uh, on the screen. And uh, yes, time to add some other features to the graphics now. So thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.